So today what we're going to talk about is a time grapher and specifically the time grapher results and how we take watches, put it on the time grapher and measure the health of the movement. So firstly, we look at three different dimensions on the time grapher, the rate, the beat error, and the amplitude. The rate is a measure of the movement's function in whatever position it's being measured in seconds per day. The next we have beat error, and that is the extent to which the balance wheel turns more this way or more this way, and that's measured in milliseconds. And finally, we have the amplitude, which is a measure of the amount of degrees the balance wheel turns. Now, a 360 degree arc would be a full turn, but it'll never do that. Normally, we look for at least 250 uh, degrees in the horizontal position and over 200 degrees in the vertical positions. It's super important to time watches in more than one position. This six is pretty much standard. Dial up, dial down, crown left, crown right, crown up, and crown down. In fact, the three most important positions that are most commonly found in a person that wears a watch on the left wrist would be dial up, crown left, and crown down. So when we time out watches and we say they're adjusted, let's say in three positions, they may only be adjusted, in other words, timed out in those three positions. After sales tolerances for most Rolex calibers are timed out in five positions without crown right. I like to include crown right because it gives us something extra on this machine and I'll describe what that is shortly. So those are the six different positional changes that this mechanism will rotate the movement in in order to determine this data. Getting an average of all of these positions produces this number X, which is the average across either the rate, the beat error, and the amplitude. The delta is the maximum range between the slowest number, which in this case is crown right, and the fastest dial down. So the delta of 4.3 is in all of six positions. And now we have the DVH, that is the delta, or the difference between the vertical and the horizontal positions. And DI is your delta between the dial up position and the crown left position. Again, as I mentioned, those two positions are often looked at as being the most important. Finally, this DVM is a number that can only be calculated if you do all six positional uh, reads. And that is a theoretical number at an amplitude of 270. What would the poise error be and at what point in the balance wheel? So at 260 degrees on the balance wheel, if the watch is in position crown up, we would see a deviation of, or a delta of 0.8. So what that shows is that there's very little poise error on this particular balance wheel. Now, what does that mean, poise error? Just like you have to balance wheels on a car by adding weight, the same is true of a balance wheel, right? If part of the balance wheel is a little too heavy or a little lighter, instead of adding weight, what we actually do is we remove weight. And I have a video on poising a balance wheel by finding the heavy spot of removing some of the metal. But anyway, if a balance wheel is out of poise, that means it's imbalanced. That will give us higher levels of the delta given that our hairspring is in perfect condition. Now, we've selected these four watches to do a stress test with. We've got a modern Rolex GMT with a caliber 3285. That's that base caliber of the 3200 series is, is basically the workhorse in all of Rolex sport models at this time. We have here next to it, a Unimatic that I modified a little bit, but it has a Salita SW200-1, which is more or less a clone of the Swiss Etta 28242. Very popular movement. Both of these run at 28,800 vibrations per hour. We start to slow down in terms of frequencies, moving to the Unitas 6497 found in this Panerai. And this, I believe, is at 21,100 vibrations per hour. And then finally, we have a vintage Maxi Mark I with a custom case. It's got fixed lug bars, custom sword hands, and I put a 60 minute aftermarket insert. It's got a genuine 1520 movement, and it's got a Trudome crystal. And this is what we use to field test the Trudome crystals. As you can see how scratched up this crystal is, we really put this one through the ringer. What we wanna see is whether or not these movements are impacted by the stressors of riding motorcycles, shooting guns, and swinging golf clubs. We ran pre-tests. We have pre-test numbers for each of these watches, each of these movements. We're gonna do those activities and then can see if in fact those activities make a difference on how these watches run. So stay tuned and enjoy what we are able to find.